Can you imagine walking the fairways with a nine-time major winner? Playing golf with a true legend of the game, a man that continues to inspire at the ripe age of 88 years young. Now imagine making him laugh, compliment your shots, and even question your handicap. Well, today that happened to an average golfer. You got it. Right, as you know, PXG have been a huge sponsor of Off The Beaten Track series and they've come up from Sam at Dundonald, which is just a couple of miles down the road from Royal Troon, where the Open Championship starts this week. And we've got an incredibly special episode for you to watch, but for me to take part in as well, because I'm about to play a few holes with Gary Player. A few questions to ask and I'll be honest with you, I'm a little bit nervous. Just about, <laughs> but not as healthy as you. Good great, to see you, man. Great to see you. Uh, good are you good? Everything going fine? Yeah, it's going good. Good. Great to see you again. Hello, how are you? Great, thank you. You're not Ernie's wife, are you? I am. He had bloody good eyes when he found you, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I might not have it by the end of the round at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? That was a smart move, eh? <laughs> how are you doing, Mark? Yeah, good to how see are you? You yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah good to see good. you. Good to go see you want me to take the way or you want to take it, Andy? Well, what I was, uh, no, we'll go with you. What I was hoping to do is yeah. we want to just play so we can uh, make filming this a little bit easier. You do oh, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. We'll play a little bit of a scramble so we're at the same yeah. position. Good, I like that. Is that okay? Yeah, I like that, yes. Oh, wow. Why does it go so straight, Andy? What's what the reason? a shot. That's a great start. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't bother. <laughs> You think that's a great that's why start? I like a scramble. You think that's a great start? Wait till you see the finish. Have you not got all the images you need? It didn't feel yeah. like this. This had a this had a feel. What's your handicap, Jock? It's seven. What? So you you do go to the office occasionally? I'm not Woo, saying, no, I'm not saying nothing till I've hit this shot. <laughs> Beautiful golf swing, man, hey? Kick around a bit. Well, we're not in the hay. Beautiful we'll golf swing, that. beautiful golf swing. <laughs> I can see you playing five times a week, huh? Oh, only four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right, we'll see you guys later. Two, three iron. See the hook? Yeah. Watch that thing run. Watch this baby run. Watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this, don't go in the hole. Don't go in. You know what they call it in salary? No, no. Same as you call it here, talent. I've got to follow this and try and hit one myself. I wanted to ask you, you've won the Open three times, nine majors in total. Is there a major that's meant the most or was there an Open that's meant the most to you in those victories? Well, first of all, Andy, there's no tournament that compares to the Open. The Open is the greatest championship by a mile in the world for the simple reason, historically number one. And we mustn't put that aside and look at that lightly. Where all great men tread and where the game started and the RNA, what they've done for golf. And if I had to pick one golf course to play in the world, it would be St. Andrews. Okay. America, it would be Pine Valley. But it's absolutely remarkable at the Open. You got a nine iron today. Yeah. To the green tomorrow from that same spot you got a four iron. Yeah. So yardage, I can play in America or South Africa or Australia where the weather's great and I not even look at the hole. Say to my caddy, what is the yardage? You'll say, 130 yards. I'll say, give me a nine iron. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to look at it carefully, and the yardage in your book that is irrelevant. Mm. It might be a punch four iron. Tomorrow it might be a high sandwich. Yeah. And so you got, here's the thing about the Open. You got to use instinct to the end, though it render no reason. Okay. So you've got to have a golfing brain to play the yeah. Open. You understand? Okay. And you can't feel sorry for yourself because you put the ball in the bunker and unlike anywhere else in the world, you've got to play it backwards. Yeah. I played with a young American boy, he said, that's... That's not fair. That's yeah. not fair. You know, I said, well, life is not fair. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it, the game of golf at the Open is so different. 
Well, I, I've, sometimes I, I've, I, hmm? so I've got a question further down that yeah. I was going to ask you, but it's in. The, uh, do you need a, a broader shot repertoire yes. to win the Open? I think you do. Yeah. I think you do, particularly if the weather stays great. No. Yeah. But if the weather comes up, yes. I mean, I've often got a shot of 100 yards. I take a seven iron. Yeah, yeah. I take a seven iron, and we'll yeah. show you. Yeah. I'll just go. Whoosh, that high off the ground. Yeah. Do you, th do you think that, the, by mere fact of that, do you think it eliminates half the field who've never definitely, played golf before? Definitely, definitely, definitely. And people who feel sorry for themselves, particularly, i.e., you're sitting there having lunch, it's a beautiful morning like today, and you think, wow, what a day to play golf. Mm. And you have lunch, and you go and have a nap, and you come back, you have afternoon tea, and then you tee off at four o'clock. Yeah. And now the wind the comes up, and the rain, the guy, you start thinking, hell, look at those guys, they all had perfect weather. Yeah. If you feel sorry for yourself, you're gone. Yeah, yeah. And uh, which invariably happens. And, uh, you know, when I won the last Open at Lytham and St. Anne's, I teed off at just around close to four o'clock. And they, the press said to me, what did you do this morning? I said, I slept. They said, you slept? What time did you go to bed? I said, 10 o'clock. What time do you wake up? I said, 12 o'clock. So I'm a champion so sleeper, yeah. which is a big thing. I read a lot. I sleep a lot. I laugh a lot. Because yeah. that helps to oh, keep you... Recipe, is it? Oh, I, it's a great thing. It's well, before, thing. before we get... You've just drove one straight down the middle yeah. there. And I have got another question yeah. that says, what did you consider to be the strongest part of your game before we go and hit these? My you, mind. Really? My mind. I loved adversity because I knew golf was a game full of adversity yeah. okay, as a young man because I struggled. I think the, the apt way of saying it is I struggled like a junkyard dog. Right. Mother dying when I'm nine, my brother going to war to fight with the British and the Americans at 17. Right. 17. My sister at boarding school, my father working in a gold mine 8,000 feet underground, 100 pounds a month, a poor man. Yeah. And so I lay in bed. I went to a school called King Edward the Seventh, uh, probably the, maybe the greatest high school in the world. Your dress code, your manners, the kids speak five languages, Olympic pools, all these facilities. I went to as a poor boy, luckily, because right. it didn't cost much. It was a public school. Yeah. And uh, so that was a very, it stood me in good stead. Yeah. But the great, and then I'd lay in bed at night being on my own because I'd come home, nobody in the house, and I'd cook my own food, which was terrible, I'd make my own bed every day. And I vividly remember lying in bed saying, I wish I was dead, every night crying. And that's why I became a oh, world champion. Yeah. The greatest gift Your bestowed upon me. Yeah. The greatest gift for a human being is adversity. Now, you see, if you said to me, what are the two most important things about putting? I'd say seeing your putter strike the ball. Yeah. In other words, your head, when I hit this putt, yeah. I'm looking at that name, see? Yeah. And I see it hit the name and the ball's gone. Then I look up. Now I'll show you how all golfers are. Watch. Now watch what happens when you move your head. This is all attached. When you move your head, look what happens to the putter. Yeah. You're gone. You're yeah. gone. Even if you move your head that much. Yeah. So now, without looking at the line a lot and the speed, but look at the action here. I stand here like that now. I get my hand slightly in front. Now watch, just watch my head. Watch this. Now it's gone. And then I look. Yeah. You see that? Yeah, fantastic. As nice, well. nice pace. putt. It nice was. putt. That's, and you know what? It sounds easy. You can't do it. The average golfer cannot do that. Yeah. All right, so now all this line nonsense. Oh, God, I can't do that. Right. I've got to move it. <laughs> There's the name, see? PXG, see okay. the name? Now line it up, look at your strength, and then see it hit the PXG. That's right, that's right. Excellent. You looked up a little quickly, though. Did I? Still uh, I'll give you a 6 out of 10 for that. Okay. Lovely strength, but you were a little bit like that. Okay. You got, it's got to be there. It's funny, actually. I watched that. You did just a smidge. Did you see yeah. that? Yeah, just, just, just a, a smidge. Just as it hit it, it went. Yeah. Do you know what that's called? Anxiety. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why they have a bunker in the I middle of the field. I what you're saying there. Punish the middle, yeah. yeah. I was always taught... I've got one. Oh, you got one. I was always taught to hit the ball in the middle of the fairway. Yeah, no, I agree with what you say. I mean, put the bunkers on the side, not in the middle. Yeah. Have you, okay. have you played here before? I have. You know, the, you know the route, then? Yeah, it's a nice course. Okay. Okay, so 
The best way to do is aim at it and you won't hit it. <laughs> oh, wow. There we go. Go, baby, go. I don't, I don't think we'll use many of my tee shots, will we, at this rate? <laughs> I, I'm redundant. I might as well have caddied. <laughs> right. Swinging very nicely. You see, very down, nice. You could stay down a little longer. Down over the ball longer. Yes, keep keep over the ball a little longer. Yeah. Don't come up. Come out of it. Yeah, don't okay. come. That's right. The first 20 years, the toughest. Yeah. What a great afternoon, though, eh? You know, every every afternoon is great with me. Ah. When you're getting near 90, there ain't such a thing as a bad afternoon. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the truth? Yes. You know, the older I get now, being close to 90, is gratitude. Yeah. The word is most prevalent in my life is love. If you've got love in your heart, you take care of a lot of your worries. You enjoy life. You're at peace. Yeah. And the other thing is gratitude. Yeah. It's so lucky. How did your mentality change throughout your career? Because obviously you've, you've always been very mentally strong. Yes. When, when you got older, let's say in that 50s, were you, were, so were you swinging the club as quick as you were in your 20s, let's say, or did you have to... Did you have to mentally change your mindset and adapt a little bit? Well, I realized that as you get older, although it didn't apply at 50, when I got to 60, yeah. it was more noticeable. Okay. That I couldn't hit the ball as far, Yeah. but I therefore had to spend more time putting. Yeah, I was gonna say, how did you compensate? Did. Yes, and I've always, I've never had the yips. Almost everybody who plays golf long enough gets the yips. Yeah. I never had that, fortunately, to this day. I still hold a lot of putts. And uh, so you make adjustments. Yes. Uh, you eat less, you increase your exercises, you read more to keep your mind sharp. Yes. Because most people at my age, they get a bit of dementia. My, I'm as sharp today at almost 90 as I was, maybe sharper than when I was 20. Right. Because I read a lot and I digest it. You follow? Yes. And I'm seeking knowledge all the time, yeah, yeah. so I'm exercising my mind. We, we talk a lot about how good golf is for your mental health. Yes. Um, again, probably more, I, I imagine, in the latter stage of your life. How, how, how good has it been for your own personal mental health and keeping you sort of... I don't take a single pill. Yeah. I sleep nine hours a night. Yeah. I push 400 pounds on the leg press with yeah, my yeah. legs. I run the treadmill yeah. at max, max. <laughs> And I do the sit-ups, I've got this, watch this, see that, look at that. Yeah. That, my legs, I can move like a 40-year-old. Absolutely. Simply by doing that. Now, you take Arnold Palmer, at my age, he couldn't break 100. No. I've broken my age now 3,131 times in a row. Jeez. And I'm even, Trevino, I love him, he says, what's so good about that? He says, you've got to shoot 16 over par to beat your age. He says, you can do that blindfolded. Yeah. He says, when you can do that at 95, come and tell me. Yeah. Well, I, I bet you can. I, 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 I think I, I will. I, I will. Doubt it. I had a caddy, my first caddy. I said, how far we got to go? He says, uh, very far. Very far. The next guy said, what's the yardage? A block and a half. <laughs> Oh, I like that. If that's enough club, I love it. What a bunny shot. What is that? Just grab the nine. A little bit thin on, a little bit thin. Um. Sit ball. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, good ball. Yeah. Should be on the right lip. Okay. Okay. We'll watch the head, okay? Roll out. A little okay. different. It's a little different to my putter, I must say. I think it's one of the most personable clubs in the bag, do you not think? It uh, is, it the, is. The putter. 
Yeah, it is. Very difficult to switch in and out. I'm going to use your method. Yeah, because then it gives you something specific to look at. That's the one. See how it's coming in? See that? Yeah. Watch this in a tournament, see? There's the putt inside right. I'll get over the ball. I'll show you how I used to practice, watch. <laughs> to get out of the habit. You see that? Yeah, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> Recently I met a guy called Pat Ruddy Senior and he said to me, um, more golfers should spend more time smelling the roses, uh, which I interpret as, you know, chilling out a bit, taking in the environment. Do you ever do that or has it always been about the, the, the end result? Are you always in the zone from the minute you got on that first tee? Whoever wrote that is 100% correct. You can be fully dedicated and yet smell the roses. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Yeah, I must And admit. I think laughter, yeah. I like to laugh because laughter is a youthful cell that enhances your body. Yeah. And so I work on 10 things every day of my life, at least 10 things to reach 100. Because I want to reach 100, because I love people, I love my work, and I come back to, I have gratitude and love in my heart. So I, I'm very happy. So I never wait, I'm never lonely, I'm, I'm never bored, and I think that's imperative what that man said. Yeah, absolutely. Hold on. It's, yep. a, it's a great shot. We're... I didn't hit that as like the others, no, but it's know. nice to be on the fairway. <sighs> now, Andy. you see there, Andy, yes. that'll go so much further because you're up the left hand side. So much further. Yeah. I stayed down a bit as well. You did too, you did. <laughs> Let's see where we're at. <laughs> right, here we go. Right. When you consider the ability of the world's best right now, they're all brilliant. So how much does mentality differentiate between the winners and the losers, effectively? Well, I think there's uh, a large difference between winners and losers. Winners have extraordinary mind. Well, great players. Yeah. You know, their categories. There's superstar, there's great, and there's good. Okay. Three categories, right. The superstars have a different mind. A different mindset, a different makeup. I, I can't tell you what it is. It's a God loaned gift. I don't know what it is. Uh, I can't. We, I've got a friend called Dave King, and he and I. We debate on this all the time, and I do it with many top athletes, and you hear everybody's got a different answer, but you can't define what it is. Mm. And uh, so the swing is important. The yeah. knowledge of the swing today is worse than it's ever been. Let me put it this way. The teaching with all the technology that's available is the worst teaching it's ever been. Right. If, you t if, you, if I told you what they teach professional golfers in America, and there are 15 of them that could really play. They won majors mm. and they can't play anymore. Mm. They can play, but they get around. They're not winners. And a lot of them don't, don't even play anymore. They're commentators, they do this, they do that. And I mean, I never met, I only met one man in my life, Ben Hogan, who was the best player I ever saw. He knew more about the swing and he worked harder than mm. anybody. Now, he was the only man I knew that knew the swing from A to Z. I know a lot of people knew from A to W, mm. but Hogan was the only man that knew the, the entire swing. Yeah, yeah. And he had the best golf swing. And he came here to Carnoustie one time and won. Yeah, it was incredible. And he, he won nine majors and he went to war in the height of his prime. Yeah. Can you believe it? For five yeah, years. Incredible. Then he came back and he had a car accident yeah. for two years. Yeah. If that man had had a normal life like Tiger Woods, Jack Nicklaus or myself, what would he have done? Yeah, he would have yeah. broken all records. Yeah. Never seen a swing like it. Yeah. 
And uh, he came back and won majors after the car accident. Yes, he, he yeah. did. Yes, he did. But yeah, it, it, it hurt him, you know, when he was oh, all strapped up and had so, a, an iron pipe in his and his whole body, an iron pipe. So on the mental strength, have you ever stood on a tee and sort of uh, maybe going into the final round with, uh, you, you know, whoever's second with you on the leaderboard? Yes. Do you ever feel like you had them beat before you teed off in terms of, did you see a difference in mental Well, I could believe, and you know, Jack Nicholas and I went down the line a lot. And I think I beat him as many times as he beat me. Uh, American newspapers won't ever put that in its effect. I played him in South Africa, annihilated him. Played him in Australia, I beat him. I won more Australian Opens and won more senior majors. So, but he's my best friend. He and Palmer were my best friends. But whenever we played, I never felt he was going to beat me. Really? Never. I never felt, I can honestly say, there are two things. Whenever I played against anybody, I felt I was going to beat him. Yeah, yeah. And secondly, I never choked. Yeah. Now, I didn't it. always win. I yeah, lost, yeah. Uh, I finished second in seven yeah. majors, but I didn't choke. Yeah, Somebody a played deal, a better it? shot than yeah. me, well, I didn't hit quite the right shot, yeah. but I never choked. But you can accept that, can't you then? Yes, to I accept it. Exactly. Yeah. Now, there are people that due to their uh, genetic makeup, they, they choke. Yeah. And there's nothing, no disgrace in that. That's no, how they're made. Yeah. But you can train yourself to do anything. And I, you know, I did a lot of uh, meditation, a lot of prayer, and I did a lot of exercises for strength of mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I yeah. think that's huge. Yeah. Right, what have we got? Mm. What are we going with? Well, I've got this driver. <clears throat> now, I'd like to just try this. I want to see if the shaft helps me get it up a bit. It should fade a little bit. Now you see yeah. that. That'll work. It's, it's going to run like crazy, yeah, yeah. but I couldn't get it up. So this is not a driver for the fairway for me. No. Very nice swing there. Thank you. Thank you. So you're a seven handicap, so you obviously, you're obviously on the handicapping committee at the club and you just give yourself a handicap, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice flight. Sit down. It was a nice flight. Yeah. yeah. Just a little upright for me. A little upright for me, that's any reason. Yeah. I've got to, I've got to hook it with this. Two degrees flat. No, two degrees flatter than yours. Yeah. I was just going to talk to you about, um, again, mental strength. Coaches talk about, or I, I hear them talk about the professional game, switching off in between shots. Is that something you would advocate? Did you do that, or were you just always sort of blinkered in the zone, or? No, I never switched off. Yes. Okay. I never switched. And Tiger, Tiger was a fierce mind. Yeah. Trevino switched off because he was talkative, and yeah. he did that because it suited him. Yeah, yeah, get that. You got to find out what suits you. Yes. And so therefore, Trevino would be talking and talking because he was uptight and it relaxed him. Yeah, so that And worked. once he got within 40 yards of the ball, he calmed down. Now, Tiger Woods never said a word from the first tee to the 18th. No. And I was pretty much the same. Although I was always shaking little boy's hands or giving somebody a smile yeah. in that way. Uh, but basically, I was switched on all the time. But it's horses for courses. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, it's like some people sleep well some people don't. Some people are irritable, some people aren't. Although you can't afford to be irritable as a golf pro, you've got to teach yourself not to. And you can achieve anything with the strength of mind. This might be our, our last hole, Mr. Player. Okay, and that's we, fine. We, we could do with ending up on a, finishing on a birdie. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we can roll one in and... Uh, okay. Get out your way for a sec. I don't know where I'm hitting this. I'm just putting without looking. What do you see? Off the left a bit. Okay, let's see. Come on, Bob. Oh, no. See, I straight, saw, wasn't I, it? No, I saw it right lip. 
Did you really? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. And right. if I hit it, they would have gone in. So right lip, yeah? Yeah, right lip. Right, come on, and we need a birdie finish. Keep it down that right. Head down. You got it. See that? Oh, yeah. What a putt! Did you see that, Papa? What a finish. Your husband, he's got talent, huh? Keep the head down. Keep the head doing, as I said, it's going to keep the head doing, lad. I did exactly as I was told, but that is unfortunately is the final hole, but it's been an absolute pleasure. What a pleasure. We, we, we have uh, played on a few occasions before, but I really yes, enjoyed I'm that. Joking. I appreciate Thank your time. you very much indeed. I'm glad to see you so fit and healthy. Thank you very much. I, I hope you get to that 100. I really do. <laughs> Thank you it's very been an much. It's absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for helping with the filming.